Welcome to the first edition of uh, Salt Creek TV. Um, here with my 75 gallon build that I've been working on. I shot a uh, video earlier, uh, probably about four months ago, um, saying that this was going to be uh, you know, a series of uh, videos uh, about the, the build, but actually that didn't happen. Uh, there's a few things that happened. We moved, uh, for starters, and, uh, and then somewhere in that process, I actually got a little bit overly ambitious and kind of finished the project uh, for the most part. So what I'd like to do is uh, uh, just take you on a tour of where I'm at uh, right now with the build. Uh, and I'll probably shoot some more uh, individual videos uh, on some things that you guys might be interested in. Uh, this is a, for starters, a DIY build. Uh, I built the stand. This is a, a stand that uh, um, a lot of you probably have built yourself. Uh, DIY plans are all over the place for that and uh, kind of put my own spin on it. My wife really likes this kind of whimsical look, kind of repurposed wood. So we went with that theme. Uh, really happy with how it turned out. Um, drilled a hole in the tank, uh, put in a, one of the eShops overflows, which I hadn't really heard much about. Um, so wasn't really sure how that was going to work, but I'm really happy with it so far. Um, going with two of the uh, Generation 3 Radeon um, LEDs, the, the, of course the Pros, and uh, you know even that, uh, I did some research and was trying to you know see if that would be adequate lighting. Uh, so far I have to tell you it's plenty, plenty of lighting. Uh, I don't have any corals in the tank yet, but just as far as um, spread and things like that, it, it seems like it's going to be plenty. Um, I built the light rack. Uh, running an Apex Fusion in here, uh, but why don't I just, uh, I'll take you around on a tour of the tank, and then uh, uh, we'll see where we can go from there. If you guys are interested, like I said, I'll, I'll make some more videos and uh, tell you some more details of what I've done. Alright, so let's start with um, the stand. Like I said, this was kind of a, one of those things where if you can get your wife on board with it, it just makes life a lot easier uh, for those of us who are in this hobby we know that it's it's pretty expensive and so uh, if you can get the wife on board or the husband or however the scenario might work out life gets a lot easier so um, kinda went with this design here this was just this is all pallet wood and basically what I did was uh, I just got some chalk paint uh, that comes in the spray can and just picked out a couple colors to kinda accent it and kinda went that route like I said, I, I really like how it turned out. The wife loves it, so. Um, the idea here with the front is that this is one panel. I just put some knobs on there. But really, that's just one panel. I'll show you guys how that removes. Um, the idea here is I, I didn't want any swinging doors in the way. Um, and I just wanted to be able to remove the whole thing so that when I have to do maintenance underneath, um, you know, there's nothing at all in the way. Also I have a little toddler and so doing it this way means I don't have to try to you know put safety locks on swinging doors and all that stuff because there's no way she can get this door off. And uh, so why don't I uh, uh, open the door here and and uh, show you what's inside. Here's the uh, the stand with the front door off. Um, I'll show you the door first. Basically what I did is I just took uh, some uh, plywood Paint it over it, uh, so of course you know it's not going to rot or anything like that when it's uh, around all that moisture. Um, I put this uh, shelving bracket or uh, arm here, whatever you want to call it, uh, on there to straighten out the, the plywood. As we all know, plywood's never exactly straight, and of course it wasn't just a little bit warped. So when I put it on the front of the cabinet, it kind of it wasn't flush all the way around, so I put that on there and it works really well to um, straighten it out. And what I've done here, instead of hinges and uh, you know all that good stuff, like I mentioned, I, d I didn't want swinging doors or anything like that, so I, I wanted to think of a way that I could really take this thing off quick with something that would be uh, sturdy in terms of holding it on there. And what I found was these doodads right here. These are at Lowe's. They're in the picture hanging uh, aisle. And uh, so you got that piece that goes on the, the stand, and then this is the piece that goes on the uh, 
the door and those just interlock super sturdy super easy to put in place um, here they are in the package flush mount hangers and uh, like I said these these work really great so I, I do recommend it if you guys are at all interested in this type of application um, and then what I did below here nothing super fancy uh, this is just you know a plywood base that I painted with that mildew resistant paint um, now on the outside you remember there's some uh, pallet wood and on the inside I took some sheets of Coroplast just to you know keep the moisture away from uh, not only that wood but also uh, you know try to control the temperature inside the the cabinet a little bit better I did that on both sides and then uh, we've got some prefabbed uh, wood right here it's a like a shelving piece with my apex fusion uh, right now I'm just running the four outlet bar and a WXM to control my radions and my uh, my vortex and uh, down here we just got a 29 gallon sump I'm running the curve 5 I'm I'm still in the process of cycling, so I haven't even broken that in yet. Just got some live rock in the uh, refugium, and I started out with um, you can see there a handful of uh, Cato Morpha, and uh, you know it's it's been kind of interesting. I've never cycled a tank with dry rock. Uh, it, it is cycling obviously it's going through uh, what you would expect but with the, the Kato in there it's really you know taking the nutrients uh, like uh, out of that the other you know nuisance algae would eat like it's supposed to do and it's kind of added this interesting element um, to the cycling process almost to where it doesn't even seem like it is cycling. The only thing you can really tell here is this is the piece I seeded the tank with. It's the only piece out of, I don't even know, what, about 60 pounds of live rock that actually was live. Um, you can see it's kind of got some brown diatoms going there just a little bit. But other than that, uh, you know, everything's real clean and uh, it's just been a really smooth process so far. Um, the back of the tank is just painted with black paint like a lot of you guys do. Nothing special there. This is, um, this is the eShop's Medium Eclipse Overflow. And guys, I gotta tell you, this is a really good option if you're looking to install your own overflow. Um, this is rated at 800 gallons per hour and uh, it's an inch and a half hole that you're going to end up drilling in the back. Here's the back side of the overflow. See if I can get that in there. The lighting's not the greatest, sorry about that. But there you go. Um, inch and a half hole you're going to end up drilling in the back with uh, the bulkhead is provided. They actually include the um, diamond coated or the diamond tip drill bit and uh, that red PVC that you see there that's included there's even a nice template that's included for the drilling process uh, the bulkheads in the bottom they are included um, I'm really impressed with it so far I mean it's an all in all inclusive kit you really don't have to go buy anything I just um, put the template down with a couple of uh, clamps and had a bottle of water and used it and it worked great. I was um, through in, in no time flat with no problems. And uh, so again, I, I highly recommend that. There's a smaller version and then there's a, a larger version which is you gotta drill two holes. Um, but for my purposes, in this tank, this is about a total of 80 gallons water volume running through this system. So this was really you know good enough for me. I'm, I'm running a mag 7 down there I'm probably gonna upgrade to one of the uh, J bow you know controllable uh, water return pumps 
But for now, uh, that's a good, really good combination with the, the eShop's overflow. Um, and then let's talk about the lights here. You know, I got these, like I said, I got the two uh, Generation 3 XRW15, XR15W Pro, whatever, whatever it is. And, uh, and so I was thinking about a few different ways uh, to mount these. You know, I really, the point of this is that, you know, like you guys know, you don't want just the display tank to look good. The whole thing's got to look good. So I kind of went with this rustic theme down here. But I wanted something real sleek um, in terms of the lighting. Uh, I didn't want anything bulky. I didn't want anything hanging down from my ceiling or off the wall. And so I uh, went in to Lowe's and got some shelving brackets. I'm sure you know many of you guys have used these. And I just mounted it to the back of the tank, as you can see there, the stand. And grabbed a couple of these uh, shelving brackets and uh, used use zip ties. That's all I did, guys. Um, you can see on the inside there, hopefully. Uh, just so nothing would fall or could ever fall into the water or be knocked loose. That's on both sides. Now, there's a couple things that uh, really worked great about this system that were kind of accidental, uh, not planned. I'll touch on those in a second, but here's kind of the most important thing that makes this work, guys, is um, when I first put this up, if I would walk past my tank, the whole lighting, it, it would move, it would sway, um, just from, you know, the movement of people walking by, and so at first I thought, you know, this might not work, but I'll tell you what I did here. I went and I got these rubber stoppers from Lowe's, all right? I'll pull the one out on the other side because I got my cable running through there. All right, so here, here we go. These are like 50 cents, all right? So you can see here, when I do this, how much it, and how much easily, or how easily it moves. You can see that, right? But when I take this, and I put it between the back of the tank and that bracket, Nothing. I mean, it stops movement cold. You can watch, I can, I'm trying to move that with my hand, nothing. Won't move it. And so, you can walk by, you can stand in front of the tank and jump, it's not going to move. And so that right there was the secret to the success with, with this in terms of uh, stopping that really annoying movement. The other, uh, things I wanted to talk to you about with this system were the cable management. I mean, that's not even something I was thinking of when I did this, when I decided to, you know, try this system out. But the cool thing is, as you can tell, you can't see any cables at all running from either one of the lights. And so, it's kind of random on the back side here with some zip ties, some more zip ties here. Sorry if you can't see that. Again, the lighting's not great. And then I kind of just brought them up in this little opening here. And over the back side and all the way down through there was zip ties. And, uh, I mean, it looks great. It looks sleek. It looks like there's just no cables at all. Which is, you know, we all like that. The less cables, the better. And, uh, you know, another cool thing is the way that the Radeons are mounted to the rails and uh, you know Radeon comes with these kind of multi-purpose nuts here there's uh, you can take those you can screw these completely out and use it like I have or you know this is where some people use steel cabling to hang them and uh, you know I had to drill I think one hole 
on each. So this one was already, this hole was already in the rail. That hole was already in the rail. And then I had to drill a hole here. And I had to drill a hole here in the rail. And then you just use the original hardware and it, it just, it looks terrific on both sides. I mean, it's almost like it was made for it. So the next step, obviously, is to let this continue to cycle. Um, get some cleanup crew in there and start with a fish. And uh, then coral. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, be sure to subscribe and like and comment. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to help you out with, with anything I can help you with in terms of... Um, you know, making your own version of any of this stuff. Uh, but I really thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next uh, episode of Salt Creep TV.